the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in a gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. It's the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show, starring Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong, editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, her ace reporter. Susan is holding down the office today with Sammy, the demon copy boy, while George is out somewhere, probably getting involved. Whenever George gets involved enough, Susan develops a severe case of tinnitus, or ringing in the ears. That gives you an idea of how close these two characters are. Spiel's vermin control. May we help you? Stop being so silly, Sammy. I'll get it. Lock and spiel vermin control. May we... Oh! <laughs> Stop it, Sammy. Hillsdale Morning Star. Miss Armstrong speaking. Hi, Susan. For a minute, I thought I was bugs. Oh, hello, George. Where are you? I'm in court. Again? Look, I want you to tell Sergeant Barry here that you'll stand good for a $10 fine. I'm broke. $10 fine? Fine. What for? Well, it appears that dancing on the sidewalk is prohibited in downtown Hillsdale. And what were hit... you doing dancing on the sidewalk? Huh? Not me. She. Have you gotten involved with a dancing girl now? No, no, look. Zoli didn't know there was an ordinance against it, Who so... Who is Zoli? That woman? He's her grandfather. Did he drag you into court? George, what on earth have you done? Now, if that scheming dancing girl... Look, Susan, wait a minute. Slick figure and a flashing eye and your dead. It never fails. Susan, this dancing girl happens to be nine years old. She's a little gypsy girl. Nine years old? Gypsy girl? I hear they grow up very rapidly. Yes, how about that? How about what? Oh, uh, 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 the fine. Zoli has to pay a fine because his little granddaughter was caught dancing in the street and collecting dimes. Ten dollars, please. Well, why do I have to pay the fine? Because he's broke. I'll be a doll and tell the sergeant here you'll foot Zoli's fine. Like I told you, I'm but wrong, George. too. But, George... So, here is smiling Sergeant Barry. Now, just tell Dreamboat Barry that you'll bail Zoli out. And here he is, your friendly cop, a smiling a Sergeant Barry. Hello, Sergeant. This is Susan Armstrong, dignified personal financing, a perfect stranger, name of Zoli. <laughs> Well, this is what the inside of a gypsy wagon is like, huh? Mr. Harvey, the huh? girl sleeps. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me put her in her bed, then we will talk. Good night, Kislani. Now, please sit down, Mr. Harvey. Thanks. <coughs> no, what's that? Uh, no, it is nothing. Only Sari, my parrot. Oh, parrot, huh? Well, uh, does he talk much? Uh, not very much, but very wise. Oh. Well, Zoli, you just mail Miss Armstrong the ten dollars any time you've got it. There's no hurry. I'll, uh, I'll get along now, Zoli. Uh, Mr. Harvey, hmm? I, I am a poor man. Well, that makes two of us. I need money very badly. Not for myself, for the little girl, for my grandchild. She dances, she sings because it keeps her happy. But how long? She needs care that I cannot afford. Oh. Well, uh, maybe we can do something about that. Ah, but no more kindness. This time, I give you value for your money. Well, gratitude is value enough, Zoli. I... I will sell you... Sorry. Sell me that squat box up there? Ah, that what? That parrot may make some man rich someday. Yeah, but who wants to marry a parrot even for her money? Sorry was old even 40 years ago... When my wife's father gave her to me as dowry. Hmm, some wedding gift. Another mouth to feed. Sari has the secret of some great treasure. Treasure? Sari? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Years ago, when my wife's father gave me the bird... That he did. He said, one day, 
This parrot will reveal his golden secret. He will remember again, and you will be rich. So you don't believe in that old wives' tale, do you? Oh, I do. Uh, how much do you want for the bird? Make an offer. Well, uh, six dollars. Six dollars. Too much? I was thinking of perhaps one thousand dollars. One thousand? Oh, well, uh, well, we'll talk about it some other time, eh, Zola? Uh, yes. I work now at the Turnpike Roadside Diner. Yeah, I might stop in. Good night, Zolly. Good night. Hello! Hello! Until we meet again, sorry. Hello. And that's all Zoli wanted for the bird? A mere thousand dollars? Well, I suppose you could get him for five hundred dollars a pound. Interesting, though, about the parrots having the secret words to some mysterious treasure. Interesting, if true. Yes, yeah, a very big if. Hmm. We don't believe it, but Zoli does, sincerely. Zoli didn't say what the treasure might be. He doesn't know himself. In all the 40 years he's owned that fowl, it hasn't discussed finances with him. Is it a pretty, Polly? Why do you ask, Susan? Oh, I don't know. I've always wanted a parrot. Haven't you? Well, I've always wanted a treasure. Do you suppose Sari just might have heard some cutthroats talking about pirate gold or something and, and just might remember? Oh, the, the whole thing's silly. Oh, I don't know. Priceless trinkets and pigeon egg rubies. Who said anything about jewels and rubies? It's a yarn. Catch me twisting a parrot's arm just for a measly king's ransom. It's too bad he wants so much money for it, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but she'll make an interesting story just the same. Hmm. He could uh, have a lot of fun with that bird. George, tell me where Zoli works. I just might want to interview this parrot. For a gag, of course. Just for a gag. <laughs> Interview a parrot, Miss Susan? Will you pass the marmalade, please, patient? Mm. Thank you. What can you ask a parrot? You ask them, do they want a cracker? And that's about it. Well, this bird is rather special. I know. It's got blueprints stashed away in its bird brain, showing where the flatware is hid. <laughs> kind of a fascinating story. You don't believe it, do you? Well, they laughed at Alexander Graham Bell, but today the air is full of flying machines. Patience. Bell invented the telephone. Congratulations. The Wright brothers invented the airplane. Sure. But they had to talk to each other by phone many's the time while they were inventing it. You want to bet? You win. Getting back to this here parrot now. Listen, Patience, I don't believe a word of the legend. But I just happen to admire parrots, and George says this one's a beauty. And speaks pretty well, too. Fine feathers make fine words. You know, George has a sneaking belief in this story. I'd like to buy Sari for him, but not for any thousand dollars. Hand me that airplane, um, that telephone, will you, please? Well, the bird won't go entirely to waste with me around. There. You know, I'll bet I could do things with a parrot so you'd never know it from boiled owl. George said Zoli works at the Turnpike Roadside Diner. Hello? Information, please. Will you give me the number? Good morning, Zoli. Good morning. Mr. Harvey, good morning. Nice to see you. Big hello. Sit down on stool. Oh, thanks. Uh, you busy? Uh, too late for breakfast, too early for lunch. Nothing. I say, Zoli, uh, you haven't sold that parrot yet, have you? No. Well, I was just thinking I'd like to buy it uh, for a good friend. Oh, but not for six dollars. Well, how about fifty dollars? For such a fine, well-spoken parrot. Well, frankly, her conversation chills me. Three hundred dollars. Your conversation chills me. Uh, Two hundred and fifty dollars. It may make you rich. Well, that's not why I'm buying the swab. Anyhow, the bird must have given out with the magic words in your father-in-law's time. Uh, why didn't he cash in on it? He was a very wise man, rest his soul. He never cherished the material things of the world. Very wise. Oh, boy, I must be stupid because I love the material things, especially money. All right. Two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Fifty-two fifty. Two hundred and ten, including the perch. Fifty-five dollars tops. Uh, rock bottom, two hundred and five dollars. Uh, fifty-eight fifty. That's final. Two hundred, and I do not budge one inch. Sixty bucks, last call, take it or leave it. 
Excuse me. Turnpike Roadside Diner. I'd like to speak to Zoli, please. This is Zoli. Oh, I understand you have a parrot for sale. Yes. Well, I'm thinking of buying it as a gift for a friend, but I can't pay too much. Well, I have an offer for $60. Uh, what's that? What's that? Well, I'll give you 65 uh, Excuse me. I am offered 65 for the bird. Uh, uh, 70 The gentleman now offers 70 well, 75. Excuse me. I have 75. You have 85. I have 85 from the gentleman. A quick death at $100. I have $100. Uh, and 10. And 10. And 15 more. I have 125. Uh, just a minute. How do I know you don't have a shill on the phone there bidding up the price on me? How could I know you would be back just at this moment to bid for sorry? Well, you got me there. All right, wrap it up at 150. One pair to go. The gentleman bids 150. The gentleman bleeds, too. Oh, dear. Well, uh, 175. 175. 190. 190, I have. Oh, well, 195. 195. I wouldn't pay that for a bird of paradise if paradise came with them. 195 going once. Call that dough for a parrot? 195 going twice. I always thought talk was cheap. 195 going... Uh, $200, my life's blood. The gentleman bids $200. Well, he's crazy. That must be crazy. All right, I give up. Tell the gentleman he can have the bird, and I hope they'll be very happy together. Goodbye. <laughs> Good afternoon, Star Reporter. Oh, hi, Susan. Say, uh, Susan, did uh, a cage or anything arrive by special messenger? Ca- so it was you. Who was me? What are we talking about? Where did you get $200 for that parrot? It skinned me to the bone, but I had it in the bag. <laughs> oh, there you are. Didn't want to carry her through the streets. And if... How do you know how much I paid for sorry? You were bidding against me. You're... You mean you were on the telephone this morning? Who else? Oh, no. Yonder is your purchase. Go talk to your feathered friend. Hi, Polly. Well, go on, talk. This would be a nice time to find out that your friend Zoli is a crack ventriloquist and sells more darn parrots that way. Look, parrot, I never choked a parrot, but I could learn to choke a parrot. Now talk. even threaten the jabberwock. The next line is, come to my arms, my beamish boy, or in other words, hello, sucker. Hello, sucker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now back to our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray and the second act of our story. For the past two days, Sari, the parrot with a past, has been quartered in Susan's office. While Susan and George, feeling extremely idiotic, have been trying to get the bird to talk about the treasure. Here they are at it again, just on the outside chance that maybe the critter does know something that will help George recover the money he sunk in her. Now, sorry. Please, think hard. Concentrate. Look, you. Who done it? Sammy, you're confusing her. She'll sing. How about turning a blazing light in her face? George, we're not going to grill this bird. Well, we better send out for sandwiches, then. No, we must use psychological approach. Psychological approach. Into the rigging. Rigging. Pirate ships. Look. Look, birdie. Ship. Cutlasses. Pistols. Night. A chest being lowered into a captain's longboat. Uh huh. Tropical island. Dig, dig, dig. Got a match? Uh, a blank. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Yes, sir, yes, sir, pain. yes, sir. Abel was I, or I saw Elba. Yes, sir. Hey, listen. What'd you say? What'd you say? Abel was I, or I saw Elba. Oh, who was Elba? Elba's the island where Napoleon was exiled. Hey, that's it. Napoleon. The loot of Europe. Abel was I... Say it backwards, say it backwards. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, how, how do you say Abel was I ere I saw Elba backwards? Abel was I ere I saw Elba. Yeah. So what? Say it backwards. 
Abel, was I ere I saw Elba? Yeah, yeah, I know. Say it backwards. Abel, was I ere I saw Elba is just the same both ways. Elba, E-L-B-A, spelled backwards is Abel, A-B-L-E. And saw spelled backwards is was. Hey, I get it. Yes, it's a palindrome. Uh, I must say this word, Bert, knows a few tricks. Bertie, was the pirate Lafitte? Lafitte. Sorry. Huh? Talk. Uh Uh-uh. Was it Morgan? Morgan? Hmm. Was it? Uh Uh-uh. Kid. Was it Captain Kid? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. Oh, it's no use. We're just making perfect fools of ourselves. Hillsdale Morning Star, Miss Armstrong. You got that bird's talk yet? Oh, not yet, Patience. Oh, we really don't expect anything. Just a lark. No wonder it don't talk. I thought it was a parrot. Kind of a mixed-up bird, isn't it? Well, it's a kind of a mixed-up situation. Well, you bring Georgie boy and that parrot home for dinner. I've got everything fixed up for you. What have you got fixed up, Patience? A lovely roast and a whiz-bang psychiatrist. Goodbye. Psychiatrist? Patience. Patience! Oh, dear. Now what? Patience thinks we need psychiatric treatment, George. You know something, Susan? So do I. But, Patience, it was all in fun. Oh, of course. We never really believed the bird knew about a treasure. (laughs) That's where you may be making your big mistake. But we don't need a psychiatrist. Call him off now. Go on, scat. You don't need a psychiatrist. No. Who said this doc was for you? He's for the parrot. What? He'll make that bird remember from way back. Patience, does this doctor know he's coming out here to analyze a parrot? A fee is a fee, I always say. You mean he doesn't know? Oh, I didn't talk to him. It was a friend of a friend of a friend, you know. I believe I'll pack up and depart for the North Pole. Now, wait a minute. I will not stay here and tell that man the awful truth. Now, just a minute. Just a second. What about the great experiments made by Pablo Van Dorf? Ah. Yeah. And what about the psychological experiments made on white rats in a <laughs> labyrinth? Yeah. This is going to cost us a big fee whether this doctor performs or not. He may welcome an opportunity like this for unique animal experimentation. It's the maddest thing I ever heard of. Now, I simply won't... Oh, oh, that's oh, him. Oh. Oh, what's his name again? I hardly know. I wrote it on that paper I gave yes. you. Oh, Dr. Gleibnick. Dr. Gleibnick. Please show Dr. Gleibnick in, patient. That skimpy little buzzard is going to tell where that treasure is or he'll fry, and I'm not just kidding uh, Susan, you'd better let me tell the doctor about the patient. Well, it's all yours, George. The winter sports must be lovely at the pole right now. Oh, right this way, doctor. Thank you. Oh, uh, Dr. Gleibnick, mm. so good of you to come. I'm Susan Armstrong. My dear Miss Armstrong. And this is Mr. George Harvey. Mm. It's his own fault. Uh, sit down, won't you, Dr. Gleibnick? Hmm. What was that? There is something Freudian about that invitation. Oh, no, no, no. I was just asking you to sit down, that's all. Ah, we shall let it pass for the moment. Uh, we're very grateful to you for making this house call, mm. Doctor. We think you'll be amply rewarded. Uh, I in... know I will be amply rewarded. Uh, yes. Uh, it's a very interesting case, Dr. Uh, get Gleibnick. Get on with it. Well, you see, the patient is a very old individual. Oh, extremely uh, old, But doctor. very lively, very alert, and uh, colorful. Uh-huh. Rather grotesque and bizarre looking, but... <laughs> She seems to think she possesses the clue to a vast secret treasure. Raison. Hmm. Fou. Uh, fou? Precisely. Why? My dear Gerhard. Uh, Harvey. Uh, sorry. My dear Gerhard, I would no more consider trifling with such boyish everyday nonsense as a delusion of a treasure than, uh, <laughs> than I would consider analyzing that parrot there. Oh. Oh. Uh-huh. I am not a human divining rod. I am a psychiatrist who does not interest himself in the common garden variety case. Hence, I say, treasure, fool. I resign the case forthwith. Oh, well, I'm very sorry, Doctor. Uh, well, uh, there's no charge, I suppose. Uh, uh... No charge. Only my portal to portal time. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Just for coming here and going back? Well, you didn't even get out of second gear. You are lucky. What the charge might have been if you had thrust upon me some orophiliac psychotic who thinks she knows where pirate gold is hidden. <laughs> it would have been necessary to find this fantastic treasure merely to repay me for the indignity of the situation. <laughs> Hold it. 
What's so funny, doctor? Who do you think you're snickering at? Patience, you're being very rude to the doctor. I heard this here brain diver sneering at you, too. I can't show him where the door is soon enough to uh, Dr. Glybnik. Nobody needs gold that bad. Uh, doctor, I'm terribly embarrassed. No need, no need. I'm interested. You were going to go, so go. Patience. I don't have any with Leibnick here. Leibnick. People have trouble with my name, too, Doctor. <laughs> Patience. Perhaps you and I might have a nice chat, eh? Me and you, and you and me. Oh, oh, Doctor, I don't think you understand. Indeed, I do, Miss Armstrong. Oh, but doctor... Indeed, you do, Susan. Come on, come on, come on. Let's leave them alone a bit. Oh, but George... Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. But he seems to think that Patience... Seems to think. He does think. Great thinker, the professor. Amazing mind. If you think for a second that I'll quit here and go work for you, Glenn Hyde, drive me. George, the doctor thinks that patience is the extremely aged, grotesque, bizarre patient we've been talking about. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, then... Well, didn't you hear him? If he finds out we expected him to probe into a parrot subconscious, I'll have to borrow on my insurance. Well, what'll we do? We wait here. Something's bound to give. Yes, sir. going on in there? Somebody's having a breakdown. Come on. And don't come back without a note from your mother. Patience, what on earth happened? That was Dr. Cronkite leaving on the double. Hey, who broke this lamp? And, and who upset Sari's purse? Yeah. Hey, where is Sari? She woke up screaming and followed Cronkite out. No! Oh, I gotta find that expensive duster. Hey, Sari. Here, Polly. Nice, Polly. Oh. Here, Bertie. Oh! That nut thought I was a parent. Oh, no, Patience. Now, you you don't understand. Ancient, grotesque, bizarre. Oh, I'll knock him in the head. The guy is a fake. He needs a real psychiatrist. Well, George? No, oh, it's no use. Not a sign of sorry in two days. Gypsy camp gone, huh? Yeah, Zoli and his little girl have pulled out. Oh, well. Come easy, go easy. Two hundred smackers? That comes easy? Huh. Well, it was my fault. I thought you wanted the parrot. That's why I bid on it. Yeah, and I got the parrot for you. Well, we got it for each other, okay? I thought I was getting you a gift that would last and last. And to the steenth generation? What? Huh? Oh, nothing, nothing. Well, you suggested a psychiatrist in the best of faith. I suggested a psychiatrist. Well, you distinctly said use the psychological approach. Well, I never suggested an analyst. Patients hauled in that phony. Oh, but you agreed to it. You agreed to it. You named other famous experiments on dogs and chipmunks and albatrosses or albatrox and... Don't you dare stand there blaming me for it now. I am just saying... I'm glad the bird's gone. You don't deserve a family. Miss Armstrong, Mr. Harvey... Please, Abby, can't you see we're quarreling? There's a fellow out here to see you. What? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry. Zoli. It's good to see you again, Mr. Well, Harvey. boy, it's good to see you. Uh, uh, Susan, uh, Zoli. Zoli, uh, Susan. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Zoli? Uh, how did you find Sorry? Oh, she found me. A long way she flies. Her wings are not clipped. I bring her back. <laughs> she must have been crossed with a homing pigeon. Uh, How's your little girl, Zoli? She will be much better thanks to you. Uh, thanks to the $200 for this bird. Does she miss the parrot, Zoli? Does she? Oh, she does, doesn't she? The bird is yours now. Goodbye. Health and happiness be with you. Thank you. George, could the treasure be a child brought back to health? Could it? Well, I don't know. Maybe the gold is the golden rule. Do unto others, huh? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Do unto others. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We know there isn't any treasure now, don't we? Except maybe wisdom and the golden rule. Anyhow, let's think that. Hey, you don't want to get too near that window with Sari. <laughs> what do you bet? Go back, Sari, to Dolly and his little girl. Go on, fly. Oh, <laughs> Heading straight for Zoli's shoulder, look. Zoli's waving to us. He understands. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Zoli. Thank you and goodbye. Thanks for making us rich. Oh, well. Come easy, go easy. I always say. Oh, George. <laughs> All 
Our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back with us in just a moment. You know, you're a funny one, Susan. Nah, I'm a barrel of laughs. What makes you think the way you do? Why? Well, about the meaning of the treasure, for example. How do you understand those things? Well, I'm a woman. Oh, well, this I could have told you. Well? Well, what? Tell me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, told? Well, as the parrot would say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to join us then. Thank you.